What's up, everybody? Thanks again for joining me on this week's episode of In The Pink. And if you are not familiar with what that term means, this is a term coined way back in the 1500s, before pink was even a color. And it had to do with wishing someone their optimum health and happiness. So this week, we're gonna cover gut health and we're filling in that blank with hormones. But as always, we're always gonna start out with the what we know. So my first what we know, we know that hormone imbalance is kind of a big deal and it has a wide variety of symptoms. So things such as mood imbalances, weight gain, fatigue, PMS, low libido, and even hair loss. And these symptoms of this hormone imbalance can be caused by a variety of hormones. So this issue could be linked to thyroid hormones, stress hormones, sex hormones, or a combination of them all. But if we look a little bit deeper, the root issue of this could very well be taking place in our gut. And my second what we know, well, we do know that insulin is considered our master hormone, our master regulator. But we also know that insulin is partly regulated by our gut, by a microbe in our gut called Lactobacillus ruteri. And think on this, with inflammation being a big symptom of gut imbalance, a deficiency in this one bacterial flora can make that even worse. And my next what we know, we know that vitamin D is a precursor hormone. And just like other vitamins, it is not absorbed well if we have an unhealthy gut. This vitamin D is crucial to our health picture. And if we get into chronic deficiency, this is gonna lead into some chronic problems. And my last what we know, we know that gut health also influences cholesterol levels and cholesterol is a precursor to other hormones such as estrogen and progesterone. All right, so let's move on. Let's move on to the gut's role in all this. Well, the first thing we're gonna cover a little bit here is nutrient deficiencies. Our gut is where nutrients are absorbed, bottom line. And these nutrients are required to produce some of these hormones. So if you're not breaking nutrients down, you're not properly absorbing these nutrients. So we're talking things like our thyroid hormones, our estrogen, our progesterone, and even our cortisol. And these poor nutrient absorption and deficiency issues can be caused by gut issues, obviously. So things like a candida overgrowth, SIBO, the small intestinal bacteria overgrowth, parasitic infections, digestive enzyme issues, it's all part of dysbiosis. So let's move on to the next one. Let's talk about dysbiosis. Well, we know that our gut is composed of trillions of microbes. Trillions, you guys, and I'm not kidding. And it's collectively known as our microbiome. And this microbiome plays an important role in activating and even eliminating hormones. So when we get this imbalance, which we're causing dysbiosis, and that can be caused due to stress, due to toxins, gut infections, a poor diet, antibiotic use, it will have a huge impact on how our hormones are produced and regulated. So case in point, when we talk about estrogen in particular, there's a group of microbes that has been termed the estrobilum, and that is specific for what's going on with estrogen hormone. Because normally when estrogen is deactivated by our liver, it goes on through our system and it is just eliminated like normal. But when we have an estrobilum imbalance, meaning an imbalance in these microbes that are specific with estrogen, these estrogens are not eliminated. They are reactivated and reabsorbed into the system. And then we run into issues with estrogen dominance. And of course, there's a host of symptoms related to this. So PCOS, heavy periods, painful periods, fibroids, cysts, endometriosis and there's even studies showing increased risk for cancers that feed on estrogen so cervical cancer breast cancer and ovarian cancer and these hormone imbalances we're not just talking about estrogen here let's think on thyroid it's gonna cause thyroid imbalances because about 20 percent of your thyroid is converted in your gut into the active state it's kind of a big deal all right let's move on to the next thing let's talk about leaky gut for a moment 
So when the gut lining becomes permeable because it is unhealthy, there get to be toxins and there get to be undigested food particles that are gonna exit your gut. And this causes your body to have an inflammatory reaction, right? We're gonna have inflammation involved when that happens. And inflammation, which we know disrupts everything, including hormone levels. So let's get back to thyroid. When this happens, we get problems with thyroid function. We're either gonna have an overactive thyroid or an underactive thyroid. All right, let's move on. Let's talk about some healthy practices, some things that you can do on an everyday basis to improve your gut health. So as always, I always start out with diet. Diet's an easy place to start. Now, because we're talking about inflammation here, there are anti-inflammatory diets out there. There are foods that are gonna cause less inflammation in our body. Get familiar with those foods. Also related to diet, get foods rich in probiotics. And I'm talking things like fermented foods again. Yogurt, kefir, kombucha, sauerkraut. There's many out there. Get familiar with those foods. And when I'm talking probiotics, I'm always gonna talk prebiotics. So prebiotic foods are also important. These fibers feed our good probiotics that we have planted in our gut. We want those thriving. We do not want the yuck thriving. And since I mentioned we don't want the yuck growing, let's talk about some things to eliminate. Sugar, <laughs> these yeasts and fungus and candida and yuck feed on sugar. It's really important that you become cognizant of how much sugar you're intaking. And also artificial sweeteners. More and more research is being done showing how detrimental artificial sweeteners are to our health. Steer clear. Another thing related with diet, polyphenols. Getting many polyphenols into your diet because they have antioxidant properties. We want to keep those free radicals very low in our bodies and keep our cells healthy. So foods like red wine, dark chocolate, olive oils, green teas, there are many foods in this category as well. And one more thing, water. Water is so important to get sufficient amounts of water into your diet. And a couple other healthy practices, get sufficient sleep. Try and keep stress levels at bay in your life. All these factors play into our health picture. All right, it's time to talk some plexus. Let's talk some plexus and how supplementation is not only advantageous, but in my opinion, critical. And I'm always gonna start with triplex. Triplex is their cornerstone gut health package. Three things. Now the microbiome activating slim has prebiotic fibers, which feed our probiotics. And that means feeding that probiome 5 because that has five active strains of good gut bacteria that we do want thriving. But not only that, it's got an enzyme blend in there which makes it better than any others on the market. And what that does is it goes in and wages war against the candida and yeast overgrowth that we have going on. And the third thing in there is the BioCleanse, an oxygenated magnesium supplement that gives your your body a daily gentle cleanse moving all those yuck and toxins out on a daily basis and the next thing vital biome also very important eight different strains of probiotics other than what the probiol 5 has to offer so this is going to play into getting your good probiotics more diverse getting a wider range of what you have growing in your gut all right, the next thing I wanna highlight, X Factor Plus. This has got polyphenols in it, which we covered. Plus, it has got absorbable, bioavailable, methylated vitamins. Everyone is going to benefit from either the X Factor Original or the X Factor Plus in their diet. The next thing, greens. Let's highlight the greens. Again, fermented fruits and vegetables. And I venture to guess that you don't get everything that you need in your diet on a daily basis. And the last thing I wanna cover, Metaburn. Now yes, it's a fat burner, it's a metabolism booster, but it does a whole lot more than this. Metaburn has been shown to be very effective in adrenal support, and that has to do with our hormone balance. All right, you guys, thanks for hanging with me till the very end. And if you are new to this plexus train and you have no idea what I am talking about, I'm gonna list in that description box my link. Get on there, nose around, ask me some questions. Curiosity will get you on this train every time. 
I'm also going to list in that description box some videos I've done in the past. So there'll be some easy links where you can go over the products that we've talked about in much greater detail. I'm also going to list the link to the current playlist that we're working on right now if you want to catch a couple more episodes. And you might just want to join me here again next week because what happens in the gut does not stay in the gut. It affects everything, which is going to lead into many more episodes of In the Pink.